Hear that, listen to what you are. These are the people you want to learn and listen to. So please, I get your questions for these chefs, and they are more than happy to answer those questions as well. And like the rest of us, um, all of you can answer any question. They are happy to answer those questions for you. They're here for all of us today. And if you, can, if you want to start the question now, um, there's a few people on the pens and paper that will come round, put your hand up, and they'll write the question for you. Okay? So if there's anyone out there with a question that I want to ask right now, please go ahead, put your hand up, and um, we'll try and answer your question. If you can speak out, just speak out if you've got a question. Some of the questions which were given to us, and I'm going to go through each one very quickly because some of them deserve a whole lecture. And before leaving, I have to stress something which is very important, and that is the first revelation of Al Quran Karim, which was Iqra, read. So I think Al Sunnati wal Jama'ah in the UK generally. Some people complain that there's not there's a lack of literature. There is an abundance of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'a literature available, but there is a lack of readers. So the incentment for everyone here is that after we leave, that you buy words of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'a and you read them on a regular basis. Alongside Al Quran al Kareem, your daily word of Al Quran al Kareem. That you must read works of the ulama of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Many of the questions which are given to us are answered in these works. This is one example of a work, but there are many uh, works available now in English uh, for people to read. The questioner states Is the Shaykh Ibn al Arabi, Rahmanullah Ta'ala, al Kafir, when he said, I am the truth? The statement. Al-Haq is not attributed to a Sheikh Muhyiddin ibn Arabi rahimahullah ta'ala and a Sheikh Muhyiddin ibn Arabi is not a kafir. A Sheikh Muhyiddin ibn Arabi rahimahullah ta'ala was one of the major arifin of his time and he was in fact the muhaqqiq from the arifin. And as for his statements then it is unfair for someone to make a judgment on a Sheikh Muhyiddin ibn Arabi without reading Al-Imam ibn Hajar Makki rahmallahu ta'ala in his al-fatawa al-hadithiyya. This is why when we quoted Al-Imam Ibn Hajar Makki rahmallahu ta'ala to Abdul Rahman Dimishqiyya, Abdul Rahman Dimishqiyya retorted with Al-Shaykh Muhyiddin because Al-Imam Ibn Hajar rahmallahu ta'ala explained most of the accusations levied against Al-Shaykh Ibn Arabi rahmallahu ta'ala. Al-Imam Ibn Hajar Makki if you refer back to his Al-Fatawa Al-Hadithiyya and also to the works of Imam Al-Sayuti Rahmanullah Ta'ala like Tanbih Al-Ghabi and Takhti'at Ibn Arabi and the works of Sheikh Abdul Wahhab Al-Sha'arani Rahmanullah Ta'ala like Al-Yawaqeet wa Jawahir and many works which he has. So without referring back to those works, a person cannot declare Al Sheikh Muhyiddin Ibn Arabi Rahmanullah Ta'ala a kafir. Now if someone tries equating between a Shaykh Muhyiddin ibn Arabi rahmallahu ta'ala and the Diobandiya, then the, this is Qiyaf ma'al Fariq. This is analyzing two different cases and I won't go into the detail of that. It states, is al qasid uh, al burda shirk? Because Burtada claimed that there are lines in the burda which are shirk. Now, if we debate the issues of usul, the principles of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, after having debated the usul issues, like Ilmul Ghayb were attributed to the Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam and to the awliya, what is the meaning of this according to Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah? After we have debated this intricate matter, then we can discuss whether uh, the Qasida of uh, Imam Ghusiri rahmallahu ta'ala was from Ahlul Jihad. He performed jihad on the borders. In, uh, against the foreign invaders. Uh, this can be little said of people today who are funded by the Saudi government. Is the Prophet ﷺ dead or alive? What about the verse in the Holy Quran? You will surely die and they shall also die. The verse in the Quran is 
انك ميت وانهم ميتون انك ميت وانهم ميتون and ميت the word ميت comes in the meaning of the future tense that you shall pass away and this is how i translate this you shall taste death and they shall die meaning the verse of al quran kareem also states كل نفس ذائقه الموت every soul shall taste death so the meaning of this you shall taste death and they shall die now when attributed to the messenger sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam the death differs to the death of normal people firstly the definition of death is mufaraqatu ruhi and jismi the separation of the soul from the body once the soul has been separated from the body with the anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam when their bodies are placed back when their bodies are placed in the graves then the ruh is placed back in their bodies and they stand up and pray for instance in the sahih of imam muslim the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam states maradtu bi qabri musa inda al katib al ahmar wa huwa qaim yusalli i passed by the grave of sayyidina musa alayhi salam at a red dune hill and he was standing up praying this is the state of the anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam in their graves so to equate between the passing away of the anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam and the passing away of disbelievers is not valid uh, tamthil or qiyas valid uh, analogy this is not valid a valid analogy between the two the two cases are different was albani a real muhaddith nasiruddin al albani was a researcher initially from damascus and he studied under his father nuh ali sa'ati rahimallah who was a sunni scholar a hanafi a jurist and he was also the teacher of uh, sheikh ibrahim al yaqubi he taught sheikh ibrahim al yaqubi the science of tawqeet astronomy nasiruddin his son deviated from the path of his father and was influenced by the manar magazine which is a masonic magazine and he was also influenced by other uh, thinkers within that period and he edited many of the works of hadith and he he if he, someone compiles his mistakes in editing they can make volumes of just the mistakes he made in editing those works the muhaddithin of our age of our age recent muhaddithin are the likes of a sheikh abdullah sirajuddin rahimahullah ta'ala of halab are the likes of Sayyid Muhammad bin Alawi rahimahullah ta'ala of Mecca and Mukarrama are the likes of a Sheikh Nuruddin Itr hafizahullah in Halab are the likes of Al Allama Sa'id Ahmed Qadmi rahimahullah ta'ala in and also the likes of Al Muhaddis Sardar Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala was the student of a Sheikh Mustafa Ridakhan rahimahullah ta'ala and the likes of a Sheikh Ata Muhammad Sheikh Al Kul Abu Muhammad bin Yabi rahimahullah ta'ala these are the muhaddithin of our age then there are many other ulama also this one states you love the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam too much alhamdulillah jazakumullah khairan it is not allowed to sit in a mahfil or a group to do zikr on uh, dates it is bid'ah look there is only one athar which is found in the sunan of ad-darami in the muqaddimah of sunan ad-darami which states that a group of people were sitting down and counting beads and a companion abu musa al-ash'ari radiyallahu ta'ala an saw this and he went to sayyiduna abdullah bin mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala an and sayyiduna abdullah bin mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala an condemned the group he condemned the group this is only one report he condemned the group not for sitting he 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 condemned them for their isolationist policy from the sahaba the sahaba al kiram alayhi wa ridwan because that same group was a part was a part of the khawarij later they were the same people who fought sayyidina ali karimullah wa jami kareem by the way that this other found in the muqaddimah of sunan ad-darmi is also the authenticity of this narration is contested the authenticity of this narration is contested 
this question is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam father in heaven or hell? Now firstly I must uh, alert the person who wrote this. You have not written sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in full. It is wajib for a person whenever writing the name of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to write it in full. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have not placed a capital P upon the word uh, Prophet. You must place a capital P on the name Prophet, the word Prophet, and the name of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, whenever written or mentioned, it is wajib to write salawat and salam. Salawat and salam. Then the question regarding the, the father of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, he is in paradise. Allah. And I would advise the person to refer back to the words of Imam Jalal al-Din al-Siyuti ta'ala who wrote more than three works on the subject. More than three. I think three are in Al-Hawri al-Fatawi but there are more than three works on the subject which deal with the subject thoroughly. Insha'Allah uh, this subject will be dealt with Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal by me on Sunday. And Insha'Allah the lecture will be uploaded uh, on uh, for everyone to see in detail because there are quotes people are given from Al Imam al Nawawi from different scholars. Inshallah, we will tackle these quotes on Sunday. And someone mentioned that I misquoted a hadith uh, where the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wa said, "Man intasaba ila tis'i aba yuridu bihi izzan wa sharafan, fahu aashirum fi nar." narrated by Imam Al-Ahmad uh, uh, Al in his Musnad. And inshallah this will also be tackled. It, it is not allowed to sit in a myth or have you done this one. Do the root example in Wazifa books is bid'ah. This question states that salawat and salam is bid'ah. I, I think the person needs to reevaluate uh, his Imam. That salawat and salam is not bid'ah. In fact, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an said that and to say you know salawatikum ala rasulillah that you must ornament your salawat upon the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam send us? This person, after healing me, mashallah, has crossed out S-A-W and written full salawat. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is sinless. And the book I mentioned of Ibn al-Humayr, Tanbih al-Aghbiya, Tanzih al-Anbiya an, uh, I mentioned this book in commentary, Ibn Humayr's work, which he has compiled, showing that the Anbiya Ali are free from sin. If anyone does itlaq, expression of the word dham for the messengers, Anbiya Ali wassalam, the meaning of the word is khilaf al awla. Khilaf al awla is not a sin. If someone stands up and drinks this water, has he committed a sin? No. But what is it? Makru Tanzihi, which is known as Khilaf al Awla. The person has not committed a sin. So when they use this word for Anbiya Ali, it sometimes comes in the meaning of Khilaf Awla. But even that, that attribution, even that is not accepted by us. But if an Alim does say this word, then that attribution refers to Khilaf Awla. And this also, again, the Kitab al-Shifa of Imam Qadir Iyad, rahmallahu ta'ala, this work uh, has a chapter on this subject also. This work has a, a chapter. So, inshallah, everyone here will buy a copy of Kitab al-Shifa uh, of Imam Qadir Iyad, rahmallahu ta'ala. Why should we follow a madhab? Why cannot we follow our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, directly? By following uh, the madhab, you are following the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. For instance, I'll ask a simple question. Inheritance laws. 
If someone dies, how do you distribute his inheritance? Show me this from Al-Quran and the Sunnah. It is very difficult for most people to show us this. From Al-Quran, Karim, and the Sunnah to Nabawiya, a Sharifa, going directly. So they must follow an Imam who has explained Al-Quran and the Sunnah. This is a common sense uh, thing to follow uh, one of the madhabs. Remember, as Sheikh Yusuf al Nabahani Ta'ala states that the Sunnah to Nabawiya, the Sunnah is an explanation for Al Quran al Karim. And the Al Madahib al Arba'a, the four schools, are an explanation for a Sunnah to Nabawiya. Is Milad right? Did the Sahabas do Milad? There is nothing wrong with celebrating or commemorating the birth of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anyone who condemns it, some of these people commemorate the birth of their own children and even cut cakes at the birth of their own child. And some of these people celebrate national days. National days. None of them condemn this. Now the reason they use is that these are not religious events. We do not believe in secularism. We do not divorce our daily life from our religion. Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is not secular. Everything we do in our lives is dictated to us by our religion. Remember, the Surudi government is a secular government. They have separated the religious police from the what they call the official police. But Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah currently do not have a state. But when they did, they did not separate between religion and uh, state. They did not separate between the two. So they allow celebration of the Saudi National Day. But they prohibit Mawlid. Now if you check, you can find that they have celebrations of, uh, of Halloween in Riyadh, in Riyadh. Go and check this. Right? Halloween celebrations in Riyadh on what their Sheikh, their Sheikh, famous Sheikh, Sheikh Google. You go on the search engine, you type, because most of these youngsters, they uh, look for answers in Google now. And they do not resort to ulama. So, if you check, you will find that they have Halloween celebrations, they allow Christians to do Christmas. In fact, um, a Sheikh Imran Hussein rightly pointed this out, that they allow uh, non-Muslims to live in the Arabian Peninsula without visas, uh, with visas, and give them indefinite stay. But Muslims from the Indian subcontinent uh, uh, are thrown out. Muslims from the Arab world are thrown out if their visa finishes. And those same Christians are allowed to celebrate their days uh, uh, and perform uh, their religious rites because Saudi Arabia is a secular state. It is a, sec a secular. The Jalik state, the royal family, and they, this is why they prohibit Mawlid. One thing which I disagree with the Sheikh Imran Hussein is when he says that that he does not partake in sectarian issues. I would advise that he must mention those sectarian issues which are to do with principles of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, with those sectarian issues which are to do with principles of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, because he will find that directly or indirectly, they have a link with the Dajjal also. <coughs> the question states here that they use the saying of Imam Abu Hanifa rahmallahu ta'ala, uh, I think he means, إِذَا صَحَّ الْحَدِيثُ فَهُوَ مَذْهَبِي If the hadith is authentic, then that is my school. Al Imam Ahmad al Khan rahmallahu ta'ala wrote a work on this subject. The work is called Al Fadl al Mawhabi. Fi ma'ana ida sah al hadithu fa huwa madhabi. And Al Sheikh Suleiman Wahbi al Ghawji, Hafidullah, one of the scholars in Syria, he has published this work and he has annotated on the work. It is available explaining this saying. So those of you who can read Urdu or Arabic can refer back to that work. But again, this uh, deserves uh, more detail and a lecture maybe. Regarding uh, grave worship is haram, yes, uh, grave worship is shirk. Worshipping graves is shirk. We are saying we are not worshipping graves. If someone believes we are worshipping graves, then we are ready to debate them on this subject. 
And the interpretation the question has given of grave worship is visiting graves and reciting the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Visiting graves is from the Sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and reciting the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can never be shirk. Why are the graves so high and why do they place a turban on the grave? Um, regarding this, a Sheikh Abdul Ghani and Nablusi ta'ala wrote to work. He was a scholar from the 10th century. And they mentioned that veneration is different to worship. Ta'zim is different to worshipping. Placing cloth, a cloth over the grave, or placing a turban on the grave is not considered shirk or bid'ah. It is in order to show people that the person buried in this grave was a scholar, so they do not treat the grave like they would treat the grave of a common person. This was the intention behind it. And again, uh, with regard to graves, uh, uh, I, uh, there are many works available on the subject written by a Sheikh Abdul Ghani and obviously and other ulama. Uh, again, uh, I mean, this is the last uh, point. I would advise everyone here to read, to start reading the works of Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah. Why this work Ja al Haq? Why this work Ja al Haq? Why the work of uh, Imam Qadi Iyad? Don't just buy the work. Read it also. And study these subjects. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give everyone tawfiq to learn the aqidah, to stay steadfast on the aqidah of Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah. Aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. The Salafis just said they don't have any questions to ask because you guys don't use hadith in the talk. They also said you take things out of proportion such as the talk of Murtaza Khan, have not, have not loved the Prophet and you don't understand what he's trying to portray. This is what I'm saying. Let Murtaza come and explain to us. What, what are you trying to tell us? Murtaza, come. Let's, you explain. The Najdiya people who are right, who are asking this question, they can listen and the Ahl Sunnah audience here can listen also. Allah! You explain to them. Ya Murtaba, you can explain to us what you mean. Anyone else, these keyboard warriors on the internet are to talk about. People hiding behind uh, the internet, they expect me to go onto the internet and debate them. I'm saying come face to face. As for us not mentioning the hadith, I'm sure I mentioned the hadith of Sayyidina Mu'ad bin Jabal radiallahu anhu is mentioned uh, by Imam Ahmad in his Muslim. I mentioned the hadith Man zara qadri wajibat lahu shafa'ati and in other lectures we've mentioned many many other hadith and I mentioned Ni'mati Bida'atu Hadi of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala an and the Najdiya were not even satisfied after we debated Abdul Rahman the Mishqiya and they spread rumors they said we beat him up after the lecture this is not true we did not beat him up after the lecture Abdul Rahman the Mishqiya referred to us as Yahud and when he referred to us as Yahud or like the Yahud one of the brothers who was not a part of our team um, said to him that do not refer to the ulama with such words. This was said, this happened. But no one beat up Abdul Rahman the Mishqiya. He could have uh, sued us, in fact, if this did take place with GBH. GBH. And uh, this did not take place. Uh, Abdul Rahman the Mishqiya uh, is finished. We do not, we do, we have not challenged him, even though he accepted to debate us on Tawassul. Now, Murtada Khan was challenged Abu Sama is offering 500 pounds to prove Nisfu Sha'wan. Is... Pardon? They're outside, tell them to come in. Oh. Um, the, the Wahhabi are outside. So, if they're outside, they can come in, we can discuss this. And if they're refusing to discuss the issue... Are they coming? In fact, what happened was they're not coming in. 
Murtada, when I done this with Murtada, he ran through the back door. But we're not going to run away, inshallah. Here we finish and we do dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide everyone. Also, on um, the same issue, that question, uh, at this point here, that we do not mention the this and so on and so forth, and about Murtaza Khan, and obviously Lama Sahib explained already that he can come back and explain himself. At the same time, we call this, uh, these Ali Hadith, and so on, we call this Ali Hadith, and these are selfies they call themselves, the Ali Hadith. This is a guaranteed you that any of the Ahli Hadith who have studied from the subcontinent, going back by five Sanad from the Asatiza, if they find one Ustad at the same Akidah as them, one Ustad they will not be able to find. Because in the subcontinent, all go back to Shah Abdul Haq Muhaddis, they do a Shah Abdul Aziz. And all of them, they are not to say Ya Rasulullah So according to these, their own Ustads are Mushriks as well. So first, find an Ustad of Hadith, going back more than four generations, who has the same Akidah as you. That they will not be able to find. Never mind talking about Hadith, not talking about Hadith. They cannot even prove their own Isnad going back. The own, where they receive their sons of hadith from, more than four or five ustads, none of them will be on the same aqidah as them. Because this aqidah in itself is an innovation of theirs. Also, somebody asked who is on the truth, selfies, deobandis, or bredwis. Me, as an ordinary person, is confused. Everyone says the other ones are wrong. The simple way is that, like I mentioned to you earlier on, that the bredwis, they, it is nothing separate to the Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat. Or the Sufis, these are all the same. They all are the Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat, and you have to look, when somebody says to you, Bredwis are wrong, tell them to find one point which is not in accordance with the Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat. If they show that, then we are willing to talk and reply to them about that. But every single thing of the, of the Bredwis and where the word Bredwis came from was not a new sect, but when the people of Deoband, the ulama of Deoband, when they start calling themselves the Ahl Sunnah, at the same time they have beliefs that Mazalla Allah Ta'ala can lie. The Prophet's knowledge is equivalent to animals and mad people and beasts and when they believe that another Prophet can come after the Prophet when these beliefs occurred and at the same time they called themselves the Ahl Sunnah to differentiate between the people who are on the Batil and those people who are on the Haq if you call yourself a Sunni Diobandi that means you are on the Batil and if you call yourself a Sunni Brilvi you are on the Haq that's the difference and that's where this word came from also somebody asked the question as well here uh, just quickly Okay, uh, someone asked a question, why do some people call themselves Naqshbandis, Qadris, Chishti, etc. Why can't we just call ourselves Muslim? The Qadri, Naqshbandi, Chishti, these are all tariqas of the Sufia. And these all link back, these are all rivers leading to the same sea. And these are all different chains leading back to the same point. And just these, all these silsilas, if you are a Muslim, we are all these salasil, all these are Muslim. And these are all part of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaat. This is nothing different. If you are a Qadri, if you are a Chishti, you are a Sohrwati, you are a Shazni, you are all Sunni. You are all under Hazrat Ghostar, you are all lead back, our spiritual chains all lead back to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is nothing different to that. Also, can you shed some light on the Ahl Sunnah stance on fake or false peers who do not adhere to the Sharia, i.e. long hair peers who dance to music with women, etc. I know I've got long hair as well, but it's not that long. So, but what it is that the Ahl Sunnah wa Jamaat is clear. If you want to be a peer, you're murshid, there are certain criteria you have to meet. Allah has Imam Ahmad Raza Faramatullahi Ta'ala Ali showed great strictness upon this. Somebody who does open singing, like for example here, uh, dancing to music it's, and uh, women touching them, all these things, these things are all not allowed. And if women for a man, uh, for any peer, uh, he is still a rare man to the woman. And the woman should not come in front of him unless she's with the man of Messiah, her father, brother, son, so on and so forth. And she should come, come covered as well. Anything other than that, if some people, some people do wrong and hear somebody else about fake, there has to be something original to be a fake of it. If you go to a shop and if you give somebody a hundred pound note, that person straight away will reject you because a hundred pound note does not exist. If somebody gives you a five pound note, there's a possibility that it could be fake or real because the original exists. So if there are fake peers, there has to be originals to be a fake of. So that means how there's fake peers, there are also original peers as well. And the job of the Ahl Sunnah is to hold steadfast upon to the original peers and not the fake peers. Yeah. And along with that, uh, I think that's all. I think that's all of it. And uh, also, 
about which one will go to heaven according to the Hadith of the Ahlul Sunnah Jamaat, full stop. They are the only ones that will go to heaven. Anybody who does not agree with the Qaid of the Ahlul Sunnah, the Prophet said, the rest of them will all go to the hellfire, illa millata wahida, except one. And that are the Ahlul Sunnah Wal Jamaat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all give us the ability to stay. Uh, anything, anyone who rejects the Ruriyat or Deen will stay in hellfire forever. And those who are bid'ah mukhaffafa will be taken out of hellfire from the sects. So this is just a point of clarification because people sometimes listen to the videos and make conclusions. So you understand that the Ruriyat al Deen, somebody who rejects that, those things which are incumbent upon us to believe, any rejection of them, then that person is out. He will remain in hellfire forever. He will not be taken out of the hellfire. So those people, but remember this, the simple way, the simple recipe is, if you want to receive heaven, grasp on to the ulama, the sufiya, the awliya, and they will only come to you from the Ahlul Sunnah wa Jamaat, from nowhere else. Every wali will be a Sunni, every real alim will be a Sunni, every real pious person will be a Sunni. Otherwise, there is names given to them, but in reality, they are nothing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to stay steadfast upon our deen, stay steadfast upon the Ahlul Sunnah wa Jamaat, fill our hearts with the love of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and those who are battled to show them the light as well.
وجعلنا من الذين يزيدون حبا في نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم اثبتنا على التوحيدك الخالص يا رب العالمين وأمتنا على السنة والجماعة يا رب العالمين اللهم لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا يا رب العالمين وارزقنا اتباعه يا رب العالمين اللهم أرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه يا رب العالمين بجاه الحبيب الكريم صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم أذهب عنا زيغة اللهم أذهب عنا غيب قلوبنا يا رب العالمين وأجرنا من مضلات الفتن ما أحييتنا يا رب العالمين بجاه الحبيب الكريم صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم برحمتك يا رب And just before everybody goes, just gonna make a few um, announcements. Um, there's only monthly leaflets out called monthly dean, so keep an eye out for them as well. Also, HSM will be on the Facebook, so if you've got Facebook accounts, try and link the page to that as well. And tell them to delete any photos, apart from the video, delete any photos. Uh, delete any photos from uh, the Facebook page. No, 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 no sorry, it's everyone was taking anyone's photos. taking photos, just delete them. Oh, just, right. uh, the camera for the talk only, only release that, everything else. Okay. And also, um, if you've got a bit of time, there's a couple of snacks that you can have just before you go. So, you want to sit down and uh, we'll try to bring some around to you. Also, yeah, if you want to greet the chef as well, I won't stop you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>